This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Taxi operator killed in Trelawney. The Falmouth Police in Trelawney have commenced an investigation into the shooting death of a taxi operator in Duncan's in the parish on Saturday morning. He has been identified as 54-year-old Fitzroy Gordon of Kettering District in Duncan's. Gordon, who operates a taxi from Duncan's to Clarkstone, had driven home about 1 a.m. when he was ambushed and shot multiple times. Residents of the community alerted the police after hearing gunshots, and the garden's body was later discovered along a dirt road in the community with a multiple gunshot wounds. Investigators say they have ruled out robbery as a motive for the killing as they recovered his vehicle and the cash. Body of teenager who was washed away in St. Mary found. The body of missing 14-year-old Alicase Michael, who was washed away at a river in St. Mary during heavy rains on Thursday, has been found. Her father, Christopher Smichael, confirmed the body was found about 10 a.m. Saturday. Smichael was washed away along with 10-year-old Kiwana Ricketts in the Jobs Hill community. On Friday, Ricketts' body was found along the banks of the river in the community by a search party comprising members of the Jamaica Defense Force, the Jamaica Constabulary Force, and the residents. Police sources have revealed that the two girls, who are related, were at a river washing when one of them slipped and the other attempted to assist. However, they were both swept away by the rushing water. Farmer shot dead by gunmen fleeing St. Elizabeth robbery. Police are probing the murder of a farmer in Southfield, St. Elizabeth on Friday night by gunmen following a robbery at a lottery outlet. Police named the deceased as a 64-year-old Peter Mandley, a resident of Bellevue Housing Scheme near Southfield in St. Elizabeth. A police report said about 7.50 p.m. A police report said about 7.50 p.m. Gunmen held up and robbed the lottery outlet on Kinkid Plaza of an undetermined sum of cash. Police said the Mandley, who was standing on the plaza, was shot by the gunmen as they made their escape. He was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. Bellevue, Mandley's community, which is located in closer proximity to Southfield, was the scene of last December's murder of a Chinese couple during a robbery. Last month, police killed one of three suspects who was caught on a closed-circuit television surveillance system posing as a customer in Jojo supermarket before killing He Kong Wong, 48, a businesswoman, and the Shi Yong Shu, 53, businessman of Bellevue District. Corrections Department increases threat level alert following second staff bus attack. The Department of Correctional Services has increased its threat level alert for staff members following another gun attack on the department vehicle on Saturday morning. It says a correctional officer, accompanied by an escort, had just transported staff members home in St. Catherine and was returning to the Horizon Adult Remand Center about 2 a.m. when the incident occurred. DCS says upon reaching the vicinity of the Spanish Town Road Examination Depot, gunmen opened gunfire at the vehicle. The officers reportedly returned the fire and safely made their way to the remand center. DCS says that the incident has been reported to the Hunts Bay Police Station. This is a second attack against the staff members in recent weeks. In July, three DCS workers had to dock for cover after their vehicle reportedly came under gunfire by thugs in the Maxfield Avenue area of St. Andrew. Samuda questions the claims of poor treatment of Jamaican farm workers in Canada. Labour Minister Carl Samuda has dismissed suggestions that Jamaicans employed through the Seasonal Agricultural Workers Program were exposed to subpar working conditions and the mistreatment in Canada. His response came a week after farm workers in Canada complained about working long hours, verbal abuse and intimidation, and the poor living conditions, including rats eating their food at the two farms in the Niagara region. In a release of Friday afternoon, Mr. Samuda stated that despite the claims, he had observed the opposite during a tour of nine farms in seven locations across Ontario, Canada between August 14 to 16. According to the release, Mr. Samuda said he observed very good relations among workers between workers and their employers 
and the excellent rapport between workers and the liaison officers. The minister said that liaison officers are employed by the Jamaican government in Canada to safeguard the interest of Jamaican workers and address any challenge that they experience. He said he observed no evidence of mistreatment. Trade Union seeks a meeting with Education Minister on behalf of bursars. The National Workers' Union, which represents bursars in some secondary schools, has written a letter to Education Minister Favel Williams seeking a meeting to discuss the government's decision to phase out the system whereby teachers are paid through the bursars. Granville Valentine, General Secretary of the NWU, told the news that he met with representatives of the Bursars Association of Jamaica on Friday to discuss the growing rift between the bursars and the ministry. He said he was not ruling out the possibility of a strike notice being served on the Ministry of Education. Education Minister Favel Williams has insisted that bursars were notified about the intention to have educators receive their salaries directly from the ministry prior to her making the announcement. The Bursars Association of Jamaica has been adamant, on the other hand, that it wasn't informed of such a decision. We had an urgent meeting with all the executives of the Bursars Association and some very strong position has been taken as we are not letting this one go. We also have discovered that not only the principals but the chairman of school boards is not aware of this overnight rushed approach being taken to rid the 170 schools, Bursa schools, of its treasury. It is one thing that is very unfortunate and we have done a letter which should be sent to the minister, clearly outlining our very strong but respectful position. It is unfortunate what we are seeing, and the Bursars Association has taken some real strong position not to exclude possibilities of, of protest by industrial action. Jamaica's road safety advocates are breathing a collective sigh of relief as there were only two fatal crashes and the three fatalities on the nation's roads during the one-week period August 20 to 26. By contrast, 12 people were killed during the one-week period from Independence Day August 6 to August 12, while 16 perished in the seven days from July 23 to 29. Those killed in the last week are a 24-year-old male who was pronounced dead at hospital on August 19. This after the F750 motor truck in which he was traveling and which was laden with blocks along the Winston Jones Highway in Manchester, exited the road and traveled along the embankment in the vicinity of Russell's place before it overturned. As a result of the impact, the victim received the serious injuries and was taken to the Mandeville Regional Hospital, where he was pronounced dead, according to information from the road safety unit. The cause of the crash is unknown. The other fatal crash occurred about 4.30 a.m. on Monday, August 22, along the Bustamante Highway, roughly 250 meters west of the junction of the Milk River Main Road. The RSU said it involved a white 2005 International Motor Truck and a white and a blue 2019 Toyota Coaster Bus. The International Motor Truck was transporting cooking oil and was traveling westerly along the Bustamante Highway. On reaching the section of the roadway, the Toyota Coaster Bus, which was traveling in the opposite direction, reportedly failed to keep left, and both their vehicles collided head-on at a section of the right lane. The driver and the only passenger traveling in the coaster bus received the head injuries and were transported to the Maypen Hospital, where they succumbed to their injuries. The age of the driver is unknown. His passenger was 57 years old. Overall, 309 people have been killed in 270 fatal crashes as at August 26, 2022. Fatal crashes have decreased by 4%, while fatalities are down 2% when compared with a similar period in 2021, the RSU said. So far, pedestrians account for 19% of the road users killed as at August 26. Motorcyclists account for 27% of all fatalities since the start of the year. Private motor vehicle drivers account for 22%. Private motor vehicle passengers makes up 15% of the fatalities, while passengers overall account for 23%. The category of road users deemed the most vulnerable, pedestrians, pedal cyclists, 
motorcyclists and the pillion riders accounted for 54% of the road users killed up to Friday. Males make up the bulk of the fatalities accounting for 85% and the females 15%. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.